Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today I want to give you eight things to look for. These are just things to consider. If you are dealing with a false brethren. Uh, brothers and sisters, we got to know that we are in a war here and this is real as it gets. There is only two destinations, heaven or hell. And unless we are very serious in understanding that there are many people, in fact, masses of people who are in the false church that many don't even know that they are blind and they have been led by the blind. In fact, Jesus, our Lord and Savior said it, they are blind guides leading the blind and they both will fall into the same ditch. But what I want you to understand, my friend, is how to identify them because they could cause you great harm. They could cause you great distress spiritually. When you, some of you have my books, you're out, you're evangelizing. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you, Sister Sharon, <laughs> that you are going to definitely have some hand-to-hand -hand combat with brethren who are absolutely lost. They're blind. They are just church goers going through the motions. And when you approach them, oftentimes you don't even know it until you begin to enlighten them with truth. This is where a lot will be manifest in a false brethren. The Bible clearly tells us that Paul, the worker of Jesus Christ, the missionary for Christ, another word for missionary is apostle, a sent messenger into a reg region to teach Jesus Christ the foundational stone, which is salvation for mankind. If we believe and turn from our sin, the missionary, a true apostle, is a missionary. They go into places where he is not preached and they begin to preach Jesus. This is what Christ's apostle said. Paul said this, Paul was going through a, a, a lot, my friends, and a lot of us, we do not understand how serious it is to be spokesman for God. You will endure hardships. You will go through many things that many people don't realize. Ministry is serious. It's more than just uh, hit and play on a camera and speaking on a YouTube uh, platform. My friend, we are at war. But listen to what Paul said. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. He said, I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, unbelievers, in danger in the cities, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. My friend, false brothers. That means that Paul encountered, just like we do, people who are not true followers of Jesus Christ. So now that we have established that this is biblical, my friend, this is real. There are many people, they are false. And here's eight things I want you to look for because when you come up on them, if you don't have the wherewithal and you don't really understand, friend, many people don't know Jesus Christ. Who they confess, they do not possess. They don't have his heart. They don't have heart for ministry. They don't have a heart for the poor. They don't have a heart to enlighten brethren with the truth. They don't have God's heart. Number one, the, the, this, is, this is a hands down statement of a false brethren. God knows my heart. This you will find usually when correction comes to a false brethren, they will tell you God knows my heart and you shouldn't be judging. That's number two. You shouldn't be judging. Why? Because we all sinners. We all got something. Oh, that's their number two statement. He know my heart and we all got something. In other words, what the false brother or sister is saying to you, don't come up on, on my stuff because this what I do. That's really what they're saying. Don't judge it because this what I do. Hmm. So number, number three, 
false brethren defend doctrine. They will fight. They will want to kill you over it. They won't back down. And they they usually have their pet doc- doctrines, most notably the false doctrine of tithing that has swept away masses of people who will not study the scriptures. Because my friend, you must understand when we go into the scriptures, you cannot take one scripture and build a teaching, a doctrine. When it comes to these issues of tithing and the law, you have to have first the Holy Ghost. And many people are attempting to go into the Holy Scriptures. They don't have God's spirit. I'll speak for me, my friend. When I first met Jesus, I did not know nothing about the Bible. But the Holy Spirit was teaching me holiness and being separated and consecrated and sanctified long before I picked up the Bible. For instance, when he told me to cover up my body, that the attire I was wearing was ungodly. When he told me to stop smoking Newport 100s, oops, I probably shouldn't have said that, but I was smoking them cigarettes and the Holy Ghost convicted me about it. He convicted me about jealousy. He convicted me about fornication. I didn't even know what that word was. I didn't know what it meant because fornication is a spiritual, it's from the scriptures. All I do was sleeping outside of marriage, but I didn't know nothing about these this language but once I picked up the scriptures what he was speaking to me was marinated it was married to the written word that these things that he was convicting me it was in there but when you deal with a false brethren oh my friend they 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 They'll go pick a little any something up out of there and want to fight you over it but when you touch they sin <laughs> And they love to say, number four, you're attacking the church. When you are bringing correction, my motivation to motivate you in winning in this life in Christ Jesus is to help show you areas in your life, in your paradigm, your thinking, your mentality that will harm you, my friend, and pull you away from Jesus Christ, the liberty of Christ. So so when you have someone saying you're attacking the church, we are to be like the Bereans. The scripture says that these people went and studied everything. They researched everything. The apostles, anybody was talking about it. They went and studied it for themselves. In other words, they were being good stewards over their salvation in Christ. But when you deal with a false brethren, when we are, when we are exercising what Jesus told us, Jesus said, you will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And that we should, the righteous, we examine and judge all things. We are doing on my channel, I'm doing what we're supposed to do. We are to examine and prove all things. That's what the Bible teaches, my friend. But when you deal with a false brethren, Everything is you're attacking the church. You know why? Because the church is their God. That's their demi God. They worship the church. But we know Paul told us the kingdom of God is in you. So when we're looking at doctrine, we're looking at tradition, we're looking at behaviors of false teachers and prophets and pastors, we're looking at women who say they're followers of Jesus, but they're still provocative, wearing tight clothes and flesh everywhere, booty everywhere. Oh, my friend, we have a right to examine it and to put that next to the truth of the matter. God is holy. So when you deal with a false brethren, you're attacking the church. You're attacking the church. No, we are it. We are it. But they're they're speaking of the institution, the organization. They will defend it, my friend. But they will not, which leads me to number four, they will not defend Jesus. They don't preach the cross. They don't talk about his death, burial, and resurrection and all the pain and the suffering that Jesus went through to, to protect us from God's wrath. They, Jesus is never even in their conversation. 
But when they say stop judging, that's 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 something else that's it it resounds right out of them. But when you really love Jesus and you truly are his disciple, you say, Yeah, judge me. Bring on the criticism. Bring it on. I'd rather you judge me right now, my brother and sister. Tell me, provoke me, tell me my stuff stink because I don't want to drop my bodysuit and he say, be gone. And he tells me, you've been unfaithful, unrighteous. And when I tried to send word to you, you ignored it. I don't want God to, to send me away, my friend. You hear me? So judge, Sister Sharon. I'd rather you send me all, send it, bring it. <laughs> I'm going to examine everything you got to say. Why? Because I could be overlooking something. So a wise man, follow the word. The Bible tells us. A wise man will not despise rebuke. False brethren will think you're you're trying to kill them when you rebuke them. Rebuke means to scold sharply. That means that you are seriously making an attempt to get this person to open their eyes and stop their madness. The Bible tells us that those scriptures were inspired and it was profitable for rebuke and reproof. But when you deal with a false brethren, oh, friend, they'll tell you, oh, Sister Sharon, she just harsh and she mean and all she doing is attacking the church. That's because you're a false brethren. Because there ain't nothing with someone who has discernment would say, I know I love God's people, my friend. That's why I'm here. It ain't nothing but love here. But when you deal with a false brethren, they regard your good works for evil. They are scorners. Oh, my friend. Stop judging. That's the number one. Stop judging. Stop judging. Yeah, because they know they guilty. They know they got secret sin in their lives. They know they're compromisers. They know, as we say, the truth hurts. Number five, they live in sin, and they will usually say this. They're waiting on God to deliver them. Here they are still smoking two packs a day. They still smoking weed, shooting poison in their veins, Got a Libyan lover. They've been with the same man the last 10 years. They're on the church choir. They're, they're the usher. Some of them are <laughs> the pastor, single, but he done had all these lovers. Talk about he waiting or she is waiting on God to deliver them from sin. That's a false brethren, my friend. God don't deliver us from sin. He said, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. You and I have to pick up our cross. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. It was the same man, Paul, who told us that he was in danger from false brethren. It was Paul who said that he was beating his body daily and keeping it under subjection that he did not want to become a castaway after he has preached to others, then God reject him. So my friend, this thing here called salvation is serious. You got to beat that flesh and put it under subjection. But false brethren say they're waiting on God to do it. Mm -mm. No, that is nowhere near biblical, my friend. You got to want this thing more than life itself. When you truly understand what's at stake, your soul, my friend, your lover got to go. The crack pipe will have to go. You will put down that bottle, my friend. You will turn off that computer. Oh, yes, you will. You will put down your lovers because you understand I only get one shot at this thing. And once I lose my bodysuit, I am a... Uh, appointed one death, one time I'm coming out of the body and then I will be judged. And let me tell you, my friend, when you understand that, oh, you ain't going to be talking about why I'm waiting on God. Mm -mm. You know, you know the real deal because who tells you? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in the midst of a true believer, follower of Christ. You're not in this by yourself. And he going to tell you, you going to feel it. Get that up. Get that straight. So number six, number five, they live in sin saying they're waiting on God. Number six, you will find false brethren. It's many of them on YouTube, friends. They have this breaking news kind of thing. 
And all they do is bash everybody. And some of the people that they're talking about are false brethren too. But my friend, when you spend your time and your day investigating everybody and all you doing is bashing and bashing, I'm talking about calling these people's names out left and right. But here is the, 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 the problem. What if that brother or sister repent and you have bashed them, you have dragged their name through the mud. Now all this is out in cyberspace. So my friend, we must be very careful. We understand that the scripture said that Paul said we should mark those who are contrary to the true gospel, but we must be very, very careful lest we be tail bearers, bashing busybodies just a busybody, spread nothing but garbage. God help us. A false brethren cuss. Listen, friend, I have seen and heard with my own eyes, men and women that say that they are followers of Jesus, but you put them in the right spot. They will cuss up a storm and they don't blink. It doesn't convict them. And this be some of that hardcore stuff where you like, ooh, who, who can say that? And I believe false brethren call people like homosexuals, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they call them very derogatory names. It does not bother them. My friend, it's not right to, to bash homosexuals. We know homosexuality is sin, but for you to call them certain names, it don't, it's so vulgar the names they call them. I believe you are false brethren. Because you should have conviction. When you use the N-I-G-G word, and I don't never use that word. You calling people N-I-G-G-E-R, you're a false brethren. Because you don't have no conviction of what is good, what is holy, and what is pure. And you could just call somebody a B-I-T-C-H. You just going and going. When it's convenient, you don't, that's a false brethren. And you would do well, my friend, to tiptoe around them because the Bible tells us clearly bad company corrupts good morals. So they will cuss, no conviction. And if that's you, my friend, you need to clean, you need to clean, no, you need to go look into that heart because two, the, the good and the, and the bad can't come out of the same fountain. Something is wrong with that. Number eight, don't ever forget this, my friend. False brethren know the Bible. They know it. But so does our adversary. He knows it. But the false brethren, the number one thing we must look at, they defend church. They, they defend it. They will fight for it. The church, the church, the church. No, the Christ, the Christ, the Christ. What would Jesus say? What would he do? How would he handle this situation? I don't, I don't, if someone handed me a book and they're trying to enlighten me, I'm going to take a look. If they're in the faith, I'm not talking about false religious people giving you they, you know, they tracts and they Bible. No, I'm talking about, you know, that you are confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. And they're saying, you know what, friend, this is a false doctrine and you should just hear it. It's doctrine. And my friend, doctrine could kill you. If you follow in the wrong doctrines, oh, you could get messed up. You could be shipped wrecked. As I close this uh, exhortation, I want to encourage my brothers and sisters, when you are out evangelizing, when you are trying to enlighten people, even with a lot of the things I teach here on this channel, there's, there's many of us out here teaching the same things, my friend. I'm not an island to myself. You just happen to be on my channel. But it's a lot of us out here teaching the same thing. Why? Because we're free. And one thing a false brethren don't like is for you to be free. They want you to be under their regimes and their false churches, bowing to the first lady and the bishop and the fake apostles. Uh-uh. And so they, they, they despise the fact that you're not paying tithes. I'm not under the law. I'm under the law of grace because of Jesus Christ. I'm no longer subject to the 613 laws of Moses. I'm free. But when you try to tell them, friend, you've been liberated and emancipated, that tithing is under the old covenant. It was it was given to the Levites, ancient, ancient Israel. You try to tell them this simple truth, but because false brethren don't study to show themselves approved, everything that they're toting about is topical. It's very topical. They know it, but it's topical.
You got to have his heart. You got to have his mind. And you more than anything must understand what took place on the day our Christ died and got up out of that grave three days later. You got to seriously understand what he did to set us at liberty to have a relationship with the true and living God. My friend, the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom. We are no longer alienated from God through that law. We have two laws that we must pay attention to. And false brethren don't know nothing about it. He said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So how can I love someone and I'm constantly bashing you? I'm trashing you. I'm all over you, just constantly riding you out. That's not love. I'm talking about all these so-called Christians attacking everybody. I'm talking about they, you You say, well, what you think about Sister Sharon? You better know what you think about Sister Sharon. Because if you introduce my teachings and videos that Jesus gave me to a false church or a wolfie, <laughs> a false church attender and a wolf. Oh, they go shred me. They go have me for lunch, dinner, and a snack. Why? Because they're false brethren. Oh, it's true, my friend. We are to love. And even when we make a make it clear, friend, we are to love God first with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. So you know when you are trying to spread truth that you love them. That's why you're out in the streets. Some of you are right there with me. We out in the streets. We passing out these books. We're trying to enlighten them. We're sharing the channel. We're doing, we're working. But if you think you're going to run into everybody saying, woohoo, what a great party over there motivating you to win. Woohoo. Uh-uh. No, my friend. No. Don't work like that. Paul had enemies. As I close, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, he said he was in danger from false brethren. So friends, strap up, tie up them boots real tight and understand what you're dealing with. Many people in the American society are nothing but churchgoers. That's it. They spend no time with God they're not true worshipers in spirit and in truth. And I could tell you, I could sit up probably for weeks and weeks sharing all my encounters. I call it hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> I mean, blow for blow. And when you walk away, you got to do the warfare to get that off of you. Because you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat with false brethren. So my friends, be encouraged. Keep working for our God. Do whatever he tells you to do for Christ's uh, uh, glorification to glorify Jesus. Do whatever and everything he puts in your heart. Do not take down. You're going to have some battles with false brethren. So God bless you, my friend. Let the truth abide in you and be blessed on the battlefield. In Jesus name, God bless.